So Green Book, which is nominated for Best Picture, Best Performance by an Actor, Viviga Mortensen, Best uh, Supporting Actor, Mahershala Ali. Uh, best you, original- you, before you continue on that, can you just explain? I know you've done this before, but just yeah. explain why it's Viggo Mortensen as lead and Mahershala Ali for support, because anyone who sees this film will go, but it's they're both the same. I know. Um, so basically the way it works is it's to do with positioning by film companies, because what film companies don't want is is the, the members of their film competing against each other. And uh, so, I mean, I agree with you. There is a really odd thing about saying the Viggo... The theory is that because we see the story from the point of view of the Viggo Mortensen character, okay. therefore he's the lead actor. But then if you look back to something like The Accidental Tourist and go, supporting actress, really? And the, the Oscars are littered with this... Well, the Oscars and BAFTA and Golden Globes are littered with this kind of thing. It's... it's, uh, it's I mean, I, it is interesting that more and more the categories are starting to break down. I mean, there's been a lot of discussion about whether or not you should have actor and actress or whether you should just have best actor. And the arguments against that is, yeah, fine, fine. So, you know, wipe out one category that guarantees that there actually will be some kind of representation for women. Because as we know from this year's Oscar nominations, despite an extraordinary number of really, really great movies directed by women, there are no women nominated in the best director category. You mean, you have to look to, uh, you know, to Capernaum and Nadine the Back in the foreign language film category together. So that, it is... Awards are essentially foolish. Um, there's nothing you can do about it. They are. Um, also, best two-minute film editing. So, the uh, film which both you and I have seen um, uh, is... It's billed as based on a real-life friendship between Frank Tony Lip Vallelonga, who is this kind of nightclub-heavy turned driver and bodyguard to pianist Dr Don Shirley, played by Mahershala Ali. Um, directed by Peter Farrelly, who previously, with his brother directed things like, um, you know, Dumb and Dumber and, uh, you know, the, the sort of the, those sort of yuck fest movies and, and there's something about marriage I actually sort of really like. So we first meet uh, Tony Lip, Frank, in New York. He's a, he's a kind of bruising character. He's a, you know, he's a minder. He likes his food. He likes his wife. He's also an appalling racist. There's a scene very, very early on when there are some guys doing some work in the house and his wife gives them something to drink and he then takes the cups and throws them away, which is actually quite a shocking scene, isn't it? I mean, it's a very, very early on. It establishes that this is this is the world that he lives in. These are the views that he takes. The club is closing for a while and he needs work. And uh, he answers uh, a request to go and see Dr. Don Shirley, who he doesn't realise is African-American, who is this incredibly accomplished pianist, who is about to go on a tour, which will take him through the Midwest and into the Deep South. And what he needs is he needs a driver, but he also needs somebody who will, you know, who, who will, also function as his minder because some of the places that they're going to go through, they're going through segregated areas. They know from the beginning that they are not going to receive the warmest of welcomes in all the places that they go. The book of the title, the green book of the title, is a guide that is um, it's actually actually was a real thing, um, a guide for of non-whites travelling across America and where, where you may be welcome and where you may not be welcome. And, you know, that is actually it is an actual thing. So the two of them are in the car. We know um, that Tony Lip has this kind of, you know, he's he's prejudiced and he's racist and he's got these very kind of rough ideas. And we also know that he's been chosen for this job very specifically by this great pianist who actually turns out to be, you know, on the one hand, very erudite, very intellectual, very, very accomplished. And on the other hand, he's kind of playing an interesting game with uh, with Tony Lip. And the, at the beginning, they sort of bicker about everything that's different about them, everything, the way the way in which they, they view life, the way in which they view the world, the way in which they view food, the way in which they view music. But inevitably, as we would expect, during the course of the road trip, you know, the uncouth and the educated, you know, the erudite and the, and, and the vulgar discover some kind of common ground through unexpected items. And one of them is that um, Don Shirley teaches Tony how to write letters home to his wife and how to express himself in ways that are more poetic. Here's a clip. Dear Dolores, D-E-A-R, this is an animal. As I'm writing this letter, I'm eating potato chips and I'm starting to get thirsty. And you know this is pathetic, right? Tell me what you're trying to say. I don't know. Yeah, I miss her. Then say that but do it in a manner that no one else has ever done it before. Something like, uh, put this down. Falling in love with you was the easiest thing I've ever done. Nothing matters to me but you. 
and every day I'm alive, I'm aware of this. I loved you the day I met you. I love you today, and I will love you the rest of my life. So can I put a uh, P.S. kiss the kids? A P.S.? Yeah, like at the end. That's like clanging a cowbell at the end of Shostakovich is the seventh. Right. So that's good. It's perfect, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> see, I like it all over again. Yeah, you see. So... As with all Oscar contenders, I mean, one of the things that happens at this time of year is films that are awards contenders generate controversy. And some of it is is genuine disagreement about films, and some of it is that when you do when it's campaigning, there's a lot of mudslinging because what you're trying to do is knock down the opposition. So in terms of this, there have been um, complaints from Don Shelley's family that they weren't uh, they weren't contacted or consulted about the film. There has been refutation of whether or not the relationship was a friendship at all, whether in fact it should be portrayed as an employer and an employee, that the story is self-serving. There's been a lot of discussion about it being another tale about racism, but seen through the point of view of a white man who is, you know, who you could interpret as kind of, you know, he's brought in to save the day. And all of those arguments I have all got, I think, you know, a, a fair amount of merit. And there are times that the film plays like a kind of role reversed version version of Driving Miss Daisy, which, let's not forget, did win the Oscar for Best Picture back in whenever it was, 1990. And because the weird thing about Driving Miss Daisy, and I've said this a million times, it's not only, not only was Driving Miss Daisy not the best film of that year, it wasn't the best Morgan Freeman film of that year, and it wasn't actually the best Morgan Freeman film of that week, because it came out in cinemas at the same time as Glory, and I interviewed Morgan Freeman, and he said, yeah, Glory's a really, really important film. Driving Miss Daisy, it's okay, but, you know, it's... It's a piece of fluff, basically. So even back then, there was this kind of understanding that that it was a you know, that it 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 wasn't some you know it's not how green was my valley it's not Citizen Kane it's something which is kind of entertaining, and the it, in the case of uh, of Green Book, the first thing I heard about it. Thank you. The first thing I heard about it was that. Pardon me. It's a pleasure. Thank you very much. Was um, that I was heard it was getting very, very good reviews. And William Friedkin, who everybody knows, I'm a huge fan of, had tweeted this thing saying it was one of his favourite films of the year. And uh, and I often disagree with uh, with Billy Friedkin about what he thinks. And I saw um, Green Book, and I I do disagree with him because I think that there are that I think it's really charming and really fun, but I don't think there's any way that it's the best film of the year. It, it's it's very kind of you know it wears its middle brow on its sleeve, and the criticisms that are made of it are valid. The thing is this, like Driving Miss Daisy, it is blessed by two really, really good performances. And what it demonstrates is it's extraordinary how far great performances can get a film over a bunch of hurdles and make you put all the things that you know are bothersome about the film to one side. Because actually, as I was watching it, I smiled an awful lot. And what I smiled about was the relationship between the two characters, whatever the actual relationship between the people in real life was, the relationship between the two characters as portrayed on screen by Mahershala Ali and Viggo Mortensen was really sparky and charming and funny and made moments in the script that were clunky and clumsy and very, very kind of constructed in a, in a you know, really kind of Meccano-like fashion somehow gave them life. And, you know, filmmakers often talk about you know, as a, a critics tend to to, to look at the, the filmmaking and the cinematography and the editing and all that stuff. But so many films have said, in the end, it comes down to the performances. And Green Book is an absolute textbook version of if the performances fly, it will lift the film over the bumps of everything else. And I thought that really did happen with this. There, there is no question that it's... You know, it's very, very sentimental. It's very middle of the road that it takes, you know, liberties perhaps with the story. And that it's it, certainly if you compare it to if Beale Street could talk, it just looks like a piece of trivia. But that doesn't mean that whilst I was watching it and whilst I was watching those two performances, remember that Mahershala Ali was, uh, you know, best supporting actor for his role in, in Moonlight, in which he was so brilliant. And I'm a huge fan of Viggo Mortensen. And what the two of them managed to do is to find the the centre of the story, to find the centre of the script, to find the thing that makes the script work. And actually, there's so much there's so much that's joyous about watching the two of them sparking at each other that all the other problems with the film, of which there are many, sort of fall away because you think, I'm just, I'm going with the performances. 